I hope you're ready for a deep dive on favicon's styling not getting flashes of color if it's different than the user's browser preference. We're going to go real deep at looking at a bunch of ways to interact with favicons. And we'll also talk a little bit about how to interact with like JavaScript elements. So when you toggle a button, it saves it to local storage. They come back and get their custom theme. All of this in today's deep dive on favicons, theming, and local storage. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Let's get started here. I've got this project you can download below. And I've got to open at port 5500 with live server, which is an extension that lets you view HTML files essentially. So I've got an HTML file, a CSS file, and an app.js file. So the first thing I want to do is talk about some CSS only solutions where we can choose between the dark and the light based on whatever the user preference is. So in the head of the document, let's add another link. And the rel here is going to be equal to icon. Now I just need to provide an href for the icon and it happens to be at the root directory and we're just gonna do dark.png. I could close it off right here and it should work, um, but we can add a couple other things as well. So let's make sure we know the type is image PNG and then let's copy this down and we're gonna change it out and have light as well. So we've got two options here and we can essentially use HTML only, I guess to start with, just by adding some media queries directly here. So this takes a media property here where we can just simply define prefers color scheme. And if the color scheme is dark, then we can choose the dark option. So the light will be our default unless they happen to be in dark mode. Now I'm in dark mode on my machine, so I'm getting the dark mode icon. Let me go ahead and change my machine to light mode. And now you see it chooses the other icon. All right, so that CSS media query embedded in the HTML here changes it for us and that's it. We still have to have two tags here. So wouldn't it be nice if we could have simply one tag like an SVG and just change it dynamically? Well, we can't. So let me go ahead and comment these out. Actually, we'll copy this one over. I'm gonna drop this right here. We'll change this out for favicon.svg. And I can also change this out for image SVG plus XML. All right, so now this one should work and it does right over here. But what we wanna do is make this dynamic based on the user's media color scheme preference. Now, in most modern browsers, this works. Sometimes Safari has some issues, so we're gonna talk about some other fallbacks and things, but let me come over to the SVG. All right, so here's my SVG and you see we've got current color for the fill for both of these right here. So what I can do is change this out and maybe let's just give this a class. So I'll come in here, I'll have a class and we'll have like, I don't know, we'll call it fill. All right, that'll work. And then up top here, we can actually add a style tag directly embedded inside of the SVG. So I think we called this fill. So we can just have a default mode and then overwrite it for dark mode schemes. So for the default mode, we'll say one, two, one, two, one, two. And then let's go ahead and overwrite it with a media query. So whenever we're in a prefers color scheme dark, that is the user prefers the color scheme, we're gonna just change up this declaration. So let me grab this right here and we'll paste it down below. And then I just wanna change the fill and here we're gonna do our light mode. Okay, so now that I'm in light mode over here, you'll see I have the dark icon. And then as soon as I switch my system back to my preferred dark mode, actually I have to refresh and now you'll see that it shows in dark mode. So the light color. So this obviously isn't dynamic. It's when the page is loaded, it checks this media query and changes this out. Now, sometimes Safari has issues with this, so it's probably best to have both of these also here as like fallbacks. All right, so those are CSS only solutions, but you can only have the user's preference. They can't choose. So let's say they usually like it in dark mode, but for your site, they like it in light mode. Well, we can change that up. In fact, I've got this whole little section down here. Let's comment this out. And now you see I've got this nice favicon theme toggle. But I wanna look at just some styling stuff I've done here. You can see I've got this root that declares these two variables, and then we have a dark theme. By default, we start in light theme and we overwrite it if they're in dark theme. So all that's very similar to what we did in the SVG. Now, if I come down here, you'll notice I've got this data theme equals dark and data theme equals light. Now, these things I'm setting on the actual HTML. That's why they're at the root of the document. In other words, I've got a custom data theme attribute that can override somebody's browser preference, right? If they choose to. All right, so let's jump back over this way. And now what I wanna do is just look at the HTML. We've got an input that's going to be checked called theme toggle checkbox. And if I jump over to the app.js, I've got this already selected. So when this is checked, I wanna do some certain things. Now, for those of you who are already thinking ahead, you could do this just with plain CSS, or now that we've added JS into this, we can enhance this a lot. So we could do a couple of things. First of all, whenever somebody toggles that, we wanna set this in local storage. So this allows us to store their user preference. We also wanna update the data theme tag and then eventually we could update the SVG as well if we want to. Okay, so, or let's just say the favicon because there's a couple ways we can do that. So the first thing I wanna do is set their user preference in local storage. So the first thing I'll need to do is check to see if they have a current theme. Now I'm just gonna destructure this from the data set we get back. So I'm gonna say document dot 
a document element. And then we should get a data set on here that gives us an object of all the different data, custom data attributes on the HTML tag. So I'm gonna pick off the color theme and I just wanna set the current theme based on what they've done. So we'll do both of those items, update the data theme and update the favicon inside of some if statements. So I'm gonna have an if statement here where I say if the current theme, if this equals to dark, I'm gonna to wanna to switch it to light, right? There's also another option. So instead of it being dark, I could also say if that theme toggle button is checked. So that's another check I can do on like literally the check itself. So if they check it or if the color scheme is already dark, then what I wanna do, so toggle theme button dot checked. So if either of these things are true, we're gonna swap it over. So we're gonna say document dot document element dot data set dot theme equals and then we'll do light. Now we could have that as like a little mini function, but I think that works just fine for me. And then we also need to update the local storage. So we'll say local storage, set item, and we're gonna name it current theme, right? Since that's what we have here, current theme. And I'll just set this to light mode. So we've got another option here too. We'll say if it's light here, or if this is not checked. So we can throw a bang in front of that. We're gonna change both of these to dark. So just like that, if I come over here and click, you'll see it changes. And if I hard refresh, it goes back to my default. But if I inspect the HTML over here, you'll see that it actually has, let's see, if I click on here, it says light, dark, light, dark, right? So it's not saving that. So if I refresh, that's why we go back to whatever my default is. So we're saving it on local storage so we can actually grab it right away. Now, I don't wanna do it here because you'll notice if I jump over to my HTML that I pull in the script down this way. But by that time, the CSS is already loaded. The favicons are already here. Let's actually move this up above like that maybe. Um, so we've got the CSS and the app.js. So what I wanna do is write this inline so that it happens basically before any of this gets painted. So let's write a little script tag right here that's gonna do this work for us. That way we don't get that flash of white or dark. It just checks first, adds the HTML attribute, and by the time that the, the, the style sheet loads, we've already got that data theme equals dark or data theme equals light on it. So let's start actually by grabbing all of this right here. So I'm gonna grab all this because we're gonna use all this again. Now, the reason I have to do it in two different places is because one of them has to wait until I have the actual button on the page. So at this point, the button is not yet on the page. It hasn't drawn it on the page, so I can't select it. That means this whole theme button checked, all this kind of stuff is not gonna work. So we're gonna get rid of this, but we can check on whether or not it's light or dark mode. At this point, we also shouldn't have any data theme attributes. So we can't check on that, but what we could do is take the current theme. That's what we'll call it here. And we're just gonna grab this from local storage dot get item we're gonna get the item that we stored that was called current theme. Okay, cool, so it looks like I used light mode last. Let's come over here and then what we're gonna do is just check to see if there is a current theme. So let's uh, actually, maybe let's pull this one up. So we'll just check on whether there's a current theme and if there is, we're gonna basically put all these if statements inside of it. So we'll walk through this logic if that doesn't make sense what I'm doing, but I'm first checking that we have something in the local storage. If we don't, then basically I'm gonna come over here and add like some JS uh, media queries where I can use the, the user's default preference to set that as well. Okay, so if there is a current theme and it happens to equal to dark, then we wanna change a few things. We actually wanna set this to dark. Now we don't actually need to set the local storage, but what we're gonna do is update uh, the icon. So we'll do that in a second. Here we're gonna change this to light and we'll get rid of this as well. Okay, cool, so now it should load for us automatically. If I come over here, we change to light mode, even though I'm in dark mode, if I refresh, you'll notice I don't get any kind of like dark mode and then it swaps over to light mode, I get it immediately. And that's because we're doing it in the head of the document here before any of the CSS loads. That means that when I come and I look at this, you'll see it already has data theme equals light. If I hard refresh, you'll see it's already there. So it doesn't have to wait, it's, it's there immediately, which means the style I have right here applies or right here applies based on whatever that data theme is. Okay, so we can also use media queries if we want to. Prefers color scheme, we'll set this to dark. And then we'll just say dot matches. So if this matches dark, then we're gonna add this right here. In other words, if they don't have something in local storage, we want to add this anyhow, and then we're actually gonna update the local storage as well. So we'll set that equals to dark, and then why not have a else statement? So if this is not the case, inside this else statement, we'll have another one that says, now we're gonna set this to light, and we'll set this to light as well. In other words, the first time they come, if they don't have something set, we will actually set it for them. So this will only ever fire the first time somebody comes to my site. After that, they'll always have a current theme unless Safari clears that cache or whatever because um, that happens pretty aggressively on Safari. So now I'll come over here and now I should have this light mode. Now all this is again being stored in our local storage right over here. So if I jump into local storage for here, you'll see I've got the current theme equals light. If I toggle this, it should switch me over. Okay, cool. So now we've got our custom icon based on our custom color scheme 
that's not tied to the user's default browser preference. They can actually change and be the opposite of that if they want to for my particular site. Now, at this point, you'd be very justified in asking, why are we going to all of this if we're talking about favicons today? Well, that's because part of this process is you can actually use JavaScript to swap out the icon. And there's basically two options we have based on what theme we happen to be in. So the first option here, let's go ahead and get rid of this one right here. And we'll just get rid of this one as well. Okay, so the first option is we can actually just set the icon right here. So we can do document.query selector, and we're just going to select the icon. We can say if there's a link with a rel that equals uh, icon, then I want to set the href, and I could just change it out. So I'll say I want this to be dark.png, like that. And I can come over here and say otherwise, I want this to be uh, light.png. Of course, we have to repeat this as well for the very first users that come here. So we're going to set it down here. And I guess we'll set it here and change it to dark as well. So in other words, I'm now using JavaScript to select the, the icon I want. Now you'll notice I've also got to do the same here in my interactive element. So I'll come back over here. We can update the favicon as well. So I'll add this here. We're going to set this to light. That'll work. And I'll set this one to dark. So now when I click here, it should actually swap the two of these as well. Okay, if you followed me this long, you'll see I actually do have a logic error, I just realized. So if I come over here and I click first time in light mode, because the box is not currently checked, like the, the toggle button is not already checked, it's it's going to error out on me. So probably what I need to do is actually check this first. So on page load, decide whether or not it's theme dark or theme light, and then change the actual checked status first, and then it will work. All right, I'll leave you to fix that if you'd like to. I do want to talk about one other thing you could do instead of changing it out here. You could come back over here and undo this favicon, change out the favicon to instead of using like our custom styles up here, you could use current color and then just change the actual color using JavaScript. So it'd be uh, the style dot color and then you would change it to either light mode or dark mode respectively. So a bunch of ways to play with themes and favicons and especially this initial loading state is super important to get right. And that way you don't get that flash of color. Okay, well, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.